Hi everyone, my name is Nick Cosgrove. Welcome to Let's Talk. And I'm joined today by nobody. <laughs> um, this was supposed to be our second Q&A uh, of the week, but uh, unfortunately Robin was unable to make it. We were having a little bit of technical difficulty as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read the questions that clients sent to me off my phone today, and I'll try my best to answer them. Um, so bear with me, this is my first time doing this on my own. Uh, it's really good to have Robin with me, but unfortunately she was unable to make it today. So let's start off with our first question. Uh, question number one, hi Nick, will you ever stop weight training? I don't plan on stopping weight training anytime soon. Uh, as far as bodybuilding competitions, I probably will stop eventually doing bodybuilding shows because that's very, very exhausting on both the body and the mind. Um, but weight training, I find to be very therapeutic, really good for the body, and I enjoy it. So I don't see myself stopping weight training anytime soon. There's too many benefits. But as far as bodybuilding is concerned, I can see myself probably in the next maybe 10, 15 years, uh, you know, changing up my, my own training styles for a bit and transitioning more into a little bit something more uh, holistic for my body as opposed to that rigorous, intense training that bodybuilding makes you do. Question number two, do you have to squat heavy weight in order to add muscle to your legs? Uh, um, yes and no. Uh, you know, when I'm training myself personally, I, I don't squat more than a certain weight. I feel comfortable squatting. Um, my maximum weight that I squat in the gym is 315, 10 reps. I've been doing that for the last decade. It's a good weight for me. I feel it's challenging enough. I feel my legs for a week after I do it. I don't have any injuries. I'm not sore on my back. You know, I don't have any problems in my ankles or my knees. So I think you have to lift heavy enough to challenge your body. But as far as heavy, well, what's your definition of heavy? Uh, now, obviously, if you're using ridiculously heavy weights and your form is terrible, then no, it's not worth it. But again, if you're going to train in the gym, I think you have to challenge yourself. The weight is irrelevant as long as it's challenging to you. If squatting 10 pounds is challenging to you, guess what? Your legs are going to grow. Um, if you're squatting hundred pounds and that's challenging, same thing. Okay. So push yourself to the best of your ability. Don't get caught up on numbers though. Question number three. Hi, Nick. What's your opinion on TRT therapy for a man in his early forties? Uh, yeah, that's a question I get asked quite a bit from a lot of my male clients who are in their late forties, early fifties. Um, and basically my opinion is this, when it comes to TRT therapy, I think you should go to your doctor and say, Hey, look, I need to get my testosterone levels checked. I feel tired, my libido's low, or something's not feeling right. Um, now, granted, you might not have low testosterone levels. That just might be you're stressed out, you're, you're overworked, you're burnt out. But it's good to get those levels checked. Um, so I think it's good to go to your doctor, get your blood work done. And if your testosterone levels are low, then yeah, of course, I think TRT can be very beneficial. But I also think it's important that you educate yourself on what you're doing as far as what you're putting into your body. You have to remember your androgen receptors. You don't want to fry them out. You want to make sure your hormone levels are balanced. Okay, so... I'm not uh, against TRT therapy. I think it has its benefits, but I do think that you should get your blood work done first before you decide to uh, venture into going down that route. Question number four. Hey, Nick, what's your current training split look like? Uh, my training current, my, well, my current training split doesn't look like anything with COVID-19. I'm not really hitting the gym. But before COVID-19, my current training split was, let me think, uh, day one would have been quads. Day two would be hamstrings, glutes, and calves. Day three was chest, day four was back, day five shoulders, and day six was arms. And I usually throw in some uh, ab training, usually on maybe some arms or shoulder day, whenever I'm feeling like it. I don't have a set ab day. Okay. Uh, so question number five. Hi, Nick. What is the best exercise for abs? <sighs> Honestly, diet. Um, you could have the strongest and the best abs in the world, but if you have a layer of fat covering those abs, they're not going to show. Um, I think, you know, there's multiple good ab exercises, you know, hanging leg raises, lying leg raises, sit-ups, crunches, bicycles, reverse crunches. There's tons of good ab exercises. I don't think one is better than the other. Um, I think, well, if you're looking for a good ab exercise, do the one that you feel the most. I train people and, you know, they can't do leg lifts. It bothers their back or it bothers their legs or it bothers their hips. So I might give them sit-ups or hanging leg raises and all of a sudden those work. So do the ab station that you feel the most in your midsection, but at the same time, don't neglect your diet. Uh, that's key. So again, you can have the strongest core, strongest abs in the world, but if you have that layer of fat covering them, no one's going to see them. Question number six, what's more important, diet or training? Both. Um, I know a lot of people say it's 80% diet, 20% training. I've never agreed with that. I think it's 50-50. 
I don't think you can out train a shitty diet. We've heard that before. And same thing. I mean, if your diet is super clean, but your training is lackluster in a gym, you're not going to get great results. I always think of it like this. If my diet is good, it's clean. I'm getting all the energy, all the nutrients I need. My training in the gym goes up. So I keep the diet and the training together. I think those are, you know, 50, 50 equal down the board. Uh, question number seven, do you think it's better to have a training partner for your workouts? Yeah, yes and no. Um, I've been fortunate over the years. I've had some really good training partners. Uh, one of my good friends, Dan Murphy, he was a training partner of mine for a good five, I think five or six years. And we trained perfectly together. Like we never missed a beat. Uh, you know, we never sat around talking or talking about our feelings or any of that nonsense. It was just like, you go, I go. And uh, he was a great training partner. Um, as most of you know, I currently train with Robin and again, Robin's a fantastic training partner. Um, she keeps me on point. We don't talk during our workouts. We don't talk about our day, how we're feeling or any of that. It's just, you go, I go, you go, I go. Now I have seen some training partners when they get to the gym, all they do is talk or, you know, they take their time or, you know, it's just like, it's a very lackluster training session. So I think it's important that if you have a training partner, they're at, they don't have to be at the same fitness level as you, but they have to have that same intensity. You don't want someone who's negative or feeling like, oh, you know, I don't really want to train today. I don't want to do this exercise or not. No, you want someone who wants to push those weights hard. So I've been fortunate to have Dan and Robin over the years. Um, I've had a few really good training partners come and go. But the ones that uh, weren't that good, they didn't last very long with me. So if you have a training partner uh, or if you're looking for a training partner, just make sure it's someone who matches your level of intensity in the gym. Not fitness level, but at least your level of intensity. Uh, question number eight. Hey, Nick, what do you think is going? Oh, sorry. Hey, Nick, who do you think is going to win the Mr. Olympia this year in bodybuilding? If there is a Mr. Olympia, uh, hard to say. I think the current champ, Brandon Curry, is probably going to take it again. Doesn't seem to be much competition for him right now. With that said, I think if Phil Heath, the uh, seven time Mr. Olympia, does make a comeback to the stage, I do think he can take it easily. Um, I mean, right now in bodybuilding, it's kind of strange because I don't want to say the bodybuilders aren't that good because of course they're professionals. They're the best in the world, but that level of, uh, professionalism to me is not there. So in my own personal opinion, I think Brandon Curry is going to take it again. Uh, but you know, if there is an Olympia this year, I'm going to probably get some of the guys on here who are fellow bodybuilder competitors. And we'll talk about that as to who they think. And right now we don't even know who's in the lineup. I mean, who's qualified. So right now, my guess, if it was the Olympia were to start within the next few weeks, I would say Brandon Curry. Uh, question number nine. Hi, Nick. What are your thoughts on cool sculpting? Got to be honest. I don't really know much about cool sculpting. I do know this. I do know that it does work. Whether or not I believe in using it, though, I'm a firm believer to do everything to the best of your ability natural. So what I mean by that is... Diet your ass off, train your ass off, and then, okay, once you hit that plateau, maybe start looking into the, you know, the cool sculpting. Um, I do know, though, from numerous studies and after talking to Robin, too, that it, it does have its benefits, but I, I wouldn't recommend going to just do it right away. I would put your time into the gym first, uh, look, clean up your diet a little bit, and then as a very last resort after, like, say, maybe a year of training hard and dieting, you want to get rid of that little bit of loose skin or body fat, then I would be looking into cool sculpting. Um, from what I hear, it usually takes three or four treatments to get rid of certain areas of fat on your body with cool sculpting. But again, I would focus on the training and diet first before venturing down that route. Uh, question number 10. Hey, Nick, what is your favorite type of music to work out to? Depends on the muscle group I'm working. Uh, for example, leg day. I actually like listening to, believe it or not, old 80s music when I train legs, like 80s rock, 80s pop. Uh, that really gets me going to squat. I don't know why. I just, I've always liked like old, very old school eighties music. Uh, when I'm training, you know, chest or back or upper body, I'm pretty easy going. Um, I do like a little bit of hip hop, um, you know, some rock here and there, but, uh, definitely no pop, definitely no Drake. None of that pretty much nothing from the last five years. Um, but yeah, I mean, anything that gets me going, but I'm not too fussy in the gym. I mean, I, it's noise to me. So I, I do, I could care less. I mean, Maybe on certain days, if I'm like very carb depleted, getting ready for a show, then I really rely on my music. But otherwise, no, I, I like just being in the gym. So music, no music, doesn't really affect me. Hi, Nick. I noticed on one of your recent Instagram stories that you mentioned you don't eat red meat. Why is that? Personal preference. Um, I gave up red meat probably close to 20 years ago. 
I don't like the way it digests in the body. I don't like the way it makes me feel. Um, I also have a family history of colon cancer. So I know red meat is something that, you know, it's probably best to stay away from. So I don't want to develop polyps. Um, I like to keep, when it comes to me, I personally don't even eat that much meat. I usually stick to white fish, um, ground turkey, chicken breast, um, salmon, so that's about it. I'm just not a big fan of red meat. I, I do put it on people's plans, but I do recommend if you're going to eat red meat to, you know, eat it sporadically, maybe once, maximum twice a week and try to get those lean cuts of meat in like a flank steak or iron steak or extra lean ground beef. But uh, I try to get people to avoid things like ribeye and stuff like that's too high in fat. So yeah, myself personally, I'm not a big fan of red meat, but again, you know, to each their own. Um, I'm not against it, but it just doesn't work with my body. Question number 12. What is your favorite muscle group to train? It's actually legs. Uh, <laughs> you ask a lot of my clients and then they'll tell you that I've, I get a lot of anxiety when it comes to leg day. I always have, uh, when I, when I know it's leg day, I don't talk to anyone in the gym. I just focus on what I have to do. Um, and it's just, I don't know what it is, but once I get done leg day, I feel like a good sense of accomplishment. It's my hardest workout. So it's actually my favorite workout. I love squatting. I love lunging. I love doing all that type of stuff. So it would have to be leg day by far. And if I had to pick a second favorite day, um, I think it would probably be chest. I absolutely hate train arms. I find arms to be a very boring muscle to group to train. I know most guys love train arms, but what your bicep and your tricep, I mean, three heads and two heads. So it's not that complex and I just never really like train arms. So leg day is my favorite day. Uh, question 13. Hi, Nick, what do you do for cardio? Uh, my cardio is probably a bit of a joke. I like to just do a quick speed walk on the treadmill. Uh, pre contest, I'll bring it up to about 45 minutes. If it's the off season, I'll keep it at 20 minutes a day just for overall health. But I mean, I walk everywhere in the city. Um, people see me on the street and they always say, geez, you walk so fast. And yeah, I, I like walking. So I think I get enough cardio on days. But plus, my job is quite physical. I'm on the floor for a lot of hours training clients, demonstrating exercises. So I feel like I get a lot of cardio in my day. But uh, yeah, if I had to pick, I'd say speed walk or every once in a while, I'll go use the elliptical trainer. My knees are bothering me or my hips are bothering me. But I find just a regular speed walk, slight incline, that works fine for me. Uh, question number 14. Hi, Nick. What's your opinion on all the Zoom workouts being offered online by other trainers since gyms have shut down? Yeah, I think they're pretty good. Here's the thing, though. It's, it's funny because I've had clients email me and say, hey, we try a Zoom workout. Now, myself personally, I don't teach, I don't offer Zoom workouts. Um, you know, Megan, who works with me, she does the Zoom workouts. I think they can be very beneficial. Do I think they're as beneficial as going to a gym? Absolutely not. Um, and that's where I get a little annoyed because I do see some trainers advertising that you can get just as good of a workout at home. And the reality is, no, you cannot get just as good of a workout at home that you can in a gym. You can get a better workout at home if you're moving as opposed to just sitting on your ass. So I think they're good in a way that as long as you have someone who can teach you that way. I don't think I'm the best person to teach people through Zoom workouts. I like to be very hands-on with my clients. I was talking about this with one of my uh, friends who's a trainer the other day who was on the channel, um, Al Horkoff, and we were talking about like how I just, I feel like I just really need to be in the moment with my clients. So for me, they're good. And if they feel like you need that extra motivation to work with your trainer, great. Um, but again, you're kidding yourself if you think you're getting the same workout, but again, it's much better than doing absolutely nothing. So I'm definitely for them as long as they're with a trained certified professional, not an Instagram star. So please make sure you are, whoever you're booking that workout with is either your trainer or someone who's at least certified as a personal trainer. Uh, question number 15, do you ever incorporate any yoga into your workouts? You know, I don't, but, uh, I think it was on Monday I had uh, Melissa Burko on the channel and uh, she's a yoga instructor and she kind of changed my mind about maybe uh, adding a little bit of yoga into my routine. Um, I've always been hesitant to add yoga because I thought, well, I don't really need that. But as I'm getting older, I'm realizing I'm losing that flexibility and mobility. And she explained to me the benefits of adding yoga in at least like once or twice a week to your split. And it doesn't have to be an hour. It could be 30 minutes. So I'm thinking about um, even before COVID-19 is lifted, maybe booking a few half the sessions with her just to really warm up my muscle group. So I'm going to try it. I'll get back to you on it. Okay. But up until now, no, I've never incorporated any yoga into my workout split. Uh, question number 16. Is it really necessary to drink eight cups of water each day? That's case dependent. I mean, how, act how active are you? Uh, for myself personally, I can tell you that I drink probably close to six, seven liters of water a day. 
I mean, I'm, I'm moving a lot throughout the day. I work out pretty much every day of the week. My job's very physical. So downing six liters of water is nothing for me. Uh, I enjoy water, actually. I find it's really good. I actually feel the more hydrated you are in the gym, the stronger you are in the gym, the better you perform in the gym. So I've never relied on that, oh, I need to get my eight cups of water in, but I think that should be the bare minimum for most people. Uh, even if you're someone who's not very active, you want to stay hydrated. So, you know, I always uh, tell my clients, I think, you know, try to get like a one liter bottle, have it at your desk, try it down at least maybe two, possibly three if you're a guy of those a day. Um, and, you know, again, if you're working out, drink, you need to drink water, you keep yourself hydrated. So eight cups, in my opinion, is probably the bare minimum for most people. Uh, so question number 17. Hi, Nick. Does Robin cook all your meals for you? <laughs> I know who sent me this. <laughs> um, no. So I actually prep most of my meals. Now, Robin does help me quite a bit. I mean, if I'm having a really busy day at work and you know, I've done a 12, 14 hour day, she'll cook my chicken. She'll cook up my ground turkey. She'll do my salmon. Uh, she knows how to cook my food and I, it actually tastes better when she cooks it. But I've always prepped my own meals. Um, you know, I, I learned from a young age, you know, you got to take care of yourself when it comes to that type of things. I have a system I use, you know, I can cook out 48 meals in two hours if I need to. And I just, I just weigh everything out, portion everything else. So I don't rely on Robin to make my meals. She does definitely make them sometimes, but it's not something where she sits at home and makes all the meals and I just eat them all. Okay. Uh, question number 18, would you ever consider opening your own gym? You know, I thought about it, especially after COVID-19 has passed because I thought, you know, we're probably going to enter a recession. It might be a good time to start looking at commercial real estate. So the thought has occurred to me up until now, I've always subly space off contractors and uh, gym owners, uh, but opening up my own gym is definitely tempting. It's something that I have been looking into a lot in the last two, three years. Uh, just Vancouver is, if you live in Vancouver, you know how bloody expensive it is here, but yeah, I, I mean, this could be a good time to make that move. Um, you know, gyms historically are known not to be the most profitable business. However, I think uh, given my experience in this industry, I think I, I know a few ways that, you know, you could turn, especially if it was a private facility, say a personal training facility into a profitable business. So yeah, it's definitely something I'm not closing the door to. Um, I'm always open to looking at opportunities that can come. Uh, question number 19, what is the best fat loss supplement on the market these days? I don't know. None of them. <laughs> in my opinion, most, any, any fat burning supplement, again, we talked about this last week on the Q&A, unless it's a pharmaceutical fat burner, I really don't think it does much. I think you're just taking in stimulants. Um, I think a lot of people, they'll buy a fat burner and they'll give, I, I mentioned this last week on the channel, is that they buy a fat burner and then they lose 5, 10 pounds. Like, wow, this fat burner is great. But meanwhile, it's more of a placebo. And you look at, are you doing more cardio? Are you cleaning up your diet? And that's usually why you're losing that weight. It has nothing to do with the fat burner. Now, if the fat burner is working for you as a placebo, go ahead, use it. But I'm not going to sit here and say, yeah, I think this fat burner works better than this fat burner because that's not true. I don't. And you can talk to any of my clients who work with me on their supplement plans and they'll tell you, I don't put any fat burners into their programs. I stick to uh, basic, straightforward vitamins, minerals, and amino acids. Uh, okay. Question number 20, Nick, what are your thoughts about protein shakes? So if you're asking me if I use protein shakes, I don't. I haven't used protein shakes in well over 20 years. Uh, I like food. I'm a food guy. I've always been a food guy. Protein shakes don't keep me full. I don't want to drink my calories. I want to eat my calories. Now, I do work with a lot of people, though, who are they're under time restraints or they're just not big food eaters. So for them, I'll throw in a protein shake. That might be like some whey isolate and natural peanut butter or natural almond butter mixed in there. Um, just for to get some good healthy fats and some quick uh, digesting protein in there. But yeah, I'm not a big fan of protein shakes myself, but I definitely use them. And if I am using a protein powder, the protein powder that I personally use is whey isolate. I find that to be the best protein powder out there. And I actually have a video coming out about that later on next week about whey isolate. So stay tuned for that. Okay. Question number uh, 21, which are more essential for the body, fats or carbs? So again, I like carbs. I'm a carb guy, but if you're asking what's essential for the body, if you can only choose one, well, our body actually does require fats more so for the brain, just the function of the overall body. So your body doesn't really necessarily need carbohydrates, but for training purposes, I find if I don't have carbs, oh, my training sessions, they suck. So I'm a carb guy, 
but I do have a lot of people that respond better to high fat, low carb diets or high fat, um, moderate carb diets. So again, it really depends on the individual, but fats are definitely essential. And that's something that I neglected in my earlier years of training. I was always like, Oh, fats are bad. Fats are bad. And I could never figure out why I never just mentally, I just didn't feel good. I was doing high carbs, high protein, and I was always doing very low fats. Um, now, as I got older, I realized the benefits of incorporating healthy fats into a plan. So using things like salmon, avocado, um, you know, extra virgin olive oil, macadamia nut oil, and again, like the nut butters that I mentioned earlier, those are all really good to add in. The only thing you have to be careful is that most fats are very calorically dense. So if your goal is to lose weight or keep your weight uh, from rising too much, you just got to make sure you watch your overall fat intake. Uh, question number 23, do you and Robin do the same workouts together? Um, for the most part we do. Yeah. We're on the same training split. Uh, she does pretty much all the same exercises I do. I have a chest day. She has a chest day. Um, and yeah, it's always worked out really well. I mean, every once in a while we can't always train together given we have different schedules, but for the most part, yeah. I mean, I think she throws in a little bit of extra bum on her workouts. You can ask her next week on the channel what she does, but, uh, yeah, I, for the most part, we stick to the exact same routine together. Uh, question number 24. How are you enjoying your new YouTube channel? <laughs> I love it, except for today. We're having a technical difficulty, so I'm doing this on my own. So uh, besides today, I've loved that I've got to interview some really interesting people. I've got to reconnect with people I haven't spoken to in a few years. So that's one thing about COVID-19. It's really helped bring people closer together and communicating. And, you know, it's really funny because every single person that I've asked to come on the channel so far has given me the okay and said, yeah, when can I come on? So I've been really fortunate to, I think, start this channel during a time where most of us aren't doing anything. Nobody can say, no, I'm too busy or I have nothing to do. Um, and I'm really appreciative that everyone so far has agreed to come on. So it's been really fun so far, um, except for today. <laughs> but uh, other than that, no, I'm, I'm having fun with it. I don't know if I'll be able to keep up the same amount of volume when I'm back working on the floor full time, but uh, for now it's something that's great to do. It keeps me busy. And yeah, like I said, I, I get to interview some really interesting people and there's more people coming up this week and hopefully we'll just keep this going for, for as long as we can. But uh, for now, yeah, I'm loving the channel. Uh, question number 25. Hi Nick, is brown bread still okay to consume if my goal is to lose weight? Yeah, I like brown bread. Um, I think it's a lot healthier than white bread by far. You know, good multigrain is good. But my own personal preference, again, would be using something like Ezekiel bread. And that's something I have most of my clients use. And that is a flourless bread. It's usually kept in the, well, it's always kept actually in the freezer because it's flourless. So it'll go bad if you leave it out for more than, you know, a day. So Ezekiel bread, in my opinion, that is probably the most healthiest bread that you could have. If you're going to go for a second healthiest bread, I would use another type of sprouted bread or a whole grain bread. But yeah, brown bread is okay. Again, just you know, watch your bread intake though. And you know, see how your body digests it. You know, if it's, you want to make sure you're eating clean foods. If you're not digesting, like for myself personally, I don't eat bread, but if I were, I would be having something more like Ezekiel bread. And if I were at a restaurant and the only choice was brown bread or white bread, yeah, I would probably take the brown bread. Uh, question number 26. Hey Nick, what is the best time of day to do cardio? Any time of day, <laughs> uh, just get that cardio in. But no, I mean, there is definitely a smart, in my opinion, again, uh, better time to do cardio would either be either in a fasted state or immediately after your workout. Now, I know a lot of people say, oh, that's bro science. That's not true. But the reality is it does work. If you wake up in a fasted state, so you haven't eaten for eight to 10 hours, guess what? Your body is, is, is hungry. It's looking for fuel. You jump on that treadmill for 20, 30 minutes or the elliptical or Stairmaster, whatever it is your body is going to be tapping into fat for its fuel source because there's no carbs. Now you go eat a big bowl of oatmeal and jump on a treadmill. Your body is going to start using the carbohydrates from that oatmeal. No, you're not going to gain weight, but at the same time, you're not really going to lose weight. So again, it's smarter to do either fasted cardio or immediately after your workout because immediately after your workout, guess what you're doing again? So you've had that same bowl of oatmeal. You go to the gym, you do your weights, it's leg day, you jump on the treadmill for 20 minutes post leg workout. You've got nothing left for energy. Your, your only energy is going to be used, again, will be fat because the carbohydrates were used for your weight workout. So I always tell people, if you have the luxury of time, I would recommend doing either fasted cardio or immediately after your weight training sessions. If you don't have, your schedule is too busy and you don't have time to stay at the gym for two hours or you can't do cardio first thing in the morning, then any time of day. Just get the cardio in. Uh, 
Uh, question number 27. Hi, Nick. Is brown rice really that much better than white rice? I put up an Instagram story earlier today and showed that I had purchased both brown rice and white rice. So when COVID-19 first came to Vancouver and everyone was freaking out and I went to Costco, there was no more brown rice. So all I could get was white rice. So I said, okay, well, I'll just bite the bullet and get white rice. I don't usually eat white rice. Now what I found for, again, when I was doing the white rice is that I'd eat it and I would be hungry again within an hour. Whereas brown rice, when I would eat that, I would feel fuller. Now I know the reason for that is because of the fiber content in brown rice. And I know there's gonna be a lot of people that say, no, white rice and brown rice, they're the same thing. I find again, when I have brown rice, I feel fuller for longer periods of time. My blood sugar levels are stable throughout the day. White rice, on the other hand, I'm getting cravings for sugar. I, I don't feel as energized. I don't feel as full. Yeah, it tastes better, but the benefits, they don't really work for me. So I, I prefer brown rice over white. Um, from a health component, again, I, I do think brown rice beats white rice. I know many people will argue with that. But uh, for most of my nutritional plans that I design to clients, I always give them a choice and most of them take the brown because I explain to them why I think brown is better and they tend to usually agree. Um, question number 28. Any predictions as to when gyms will reopen? Well, my guess is as good as yours. Uh, you know, I'm looking around the world and watching certain countries starting to do soft openings and just seeing what happens and I think it's gonna be difficult for commercial gyms to reopen quickly. Uh, for gyms like mine, which are private training studios, I think we can practice social distancing. We can really keep things, uh, you know, the control of the, the amount of people on the floor more under control. Whereas in commercial gyms, that's very difficult to do. I mean, you've got hundreds of people walking through your doors a day. In a personal training studio, you know, you don't usually break more than 100 clients in the entire day. So, plus we know where all our clients have been. We know who's traveled, who hasn't. Uh, people are sick, they don't come in. You know, so I think commercial gyms are going to struggle for the first few months, um, you know, once restrictions have been lifted. But I think private facilities, uh, you know, I can speak for, our, for ourselves. I think we'll be able to handle it as far as other gyms. I don't know. Um, well, I guess we'll have to see. But I couldn't give a timeline because right now I haven't been given a timeline myself. So, again, your guess is as good as mine. If you hear anything, contact me and let me know. Okay. I think that might be it for the questions. Yeah, 30 questions today. Great. Well, thank you for joining me today. I'm sorry you had to listen to me do this on my own. Usually I do have Robin, uh, and I'm sure this is much better with Robin. She's much, much more prettier than I am to look at. But thank you for watching today. And check out our video tomorrow because I've got a really interesting guest on, and uh, I think you're going to want to see who it is. He's a client of mine. He's been a client of mine for over 15 years, and he's done very well for himself. So he's someone I've been wanting to get on the show for a while, and he's agreed to come on. So stay tuned for tomorrow for episode number... 27. And yeah, we're gonna have a good time with our new guest. Okay, thanks everyone. Have a great night.